Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the channel. What you're looking at is the island of Solstheim. And the reason that we're looking at the island of Solstheim is because this is the beginning of a new series that I'm very, very excited to introduce to you guys. And I'm not just being hyperbolic. I literally am almost too excited. I have to rein it in a little bit. I have to rein it in a little bit. So the reason for this series is, well... How do I say this? I guess I need to start off by giving a huge shout out to Josh Street, who has been helping me with getting caught up with the newest versions for different overhauls for Crusader Kings 2. Apparently, I've been using a lot of out-of-date versions of games. And, I mean, while it's been fun, I had no idea that all my stuff was out-of-date, but Josh Street made it apparent to me that, that there were newer versions with new cool shit that they added and he kind of walked me through how to get all that stuff so I want to give a big shout out to him and because I found these newer versions of these overhauls I now have reasons to create all new series for uh, Game of Thrones there's a new version for that a new version or a new series for Elder Kings I'm still I'm still continuing the conquest of Skingrad and the kingdom of Joblivion that's still that's still going to happen but I had, I had always wanted to do a playthrough of the Elder Kings here from the perspective of being a, uh, a crazy Daedra-worshipping king who goes full North Korea mode. And if you're, not, if you're not familiar with North Korea mode, if you want to hear it in detail, you can check it, you can look at it on CK2, uh, their wiki. They explain what it is, but essentially it's ruling as, uh, as tyrannical as possible. And... If, and you might be wondering why would you want to do that? Well, just because it gives it a, it gives it a level of freedom, but also difficulty to the game. So instead of now trying to conquer all of Tamriel with the support of your vassals and stuff, now you get to try to conquer Tamriel with everyone who follows you, hating your guts. Oftentimes, most of them being, oh, excuse me, in your prison or your dungeon, and trying to do this shit on your own. And so I think that that would fit perfectly with a character who follows a Daedra and who has mad dreams of one day bringing that Daedra into the realm of Tamriel. And for this character, I picked the Island of Solstheim because I wanted a follower who was loyal to Hercene, the Daedric, the Daedric Prince of the Hunt. I picked Hercene because Hercene's always been a favorite Daedric prince, prince of mine. He's not the... Well, he, he is one of my favorite favorites, right? He's up there with Hermaeus Mora and Molog Ball and Sanguine and Clavicus Vile. So he's not my most favorite, but he is one of my favorites. And the reason I picked him, the reason he won, because the for this series, I was struggling for multiple days trying to figure out who the hell am I going to follow? Who would be worth following? You know, there's Molag Ball. I could become a vampire. There's Hersian. I could become a, a, a lycanthrope. Uh, there's Sanguine. There's there, the, all these cool characters I could follow. Hersian inevitably won won the whole debate because uh, how do I say this? Back back in Morrowind, uh, the game of Morrowind. You could play on the island of Solstheim, and I thought it was really, really cool. This island that was still considered kind of the frontier. And uh, essentially, the only place of civilization on the island of Solstheim was Fort... What was it called? Frostmoth? I think that's what it was called. But beyond that was like just uncontrolled woods uh, infested with packs of uh, werewolves. And I thought that was a really, really cool idea. Um, it, it was like Hercene's domain on Tamriel... You know, as if the, the hunting grounds had been brought to Tamriel and it was on the island of Solstheim. When Solstheim was introduced in Skyrim, I was very, very disappointed in what they did with the island. Uh, it looked... It, it was not a fun place for me to be. It wasn't. I, I only went there to do the Dragonborn quest, which was cool and all, but the island of Solstheim was very, very disappointing. And I would often, years after Skyrim came out, would roleplay a werewolf character whose goal was to essentially take over Solstheim as a werewolf, destroy civilization, make it uh, a wild frontier again, and then invade Skyrim with an army of werewolves to then do the same thing to Skyrim, to turn Skyrim into that, uh, um, into that 
in the lore in the lore of Skyrim, it was seen as a land of perpetual snow and winter, and was and was uh, infested by lycanthropic creatures. Unfortunately, when you play in Skyrim, when it came out in 2011, it wasn't any of these things, and I and I felt that was a huge disservice to the lore. So I thought, you know what, we'll bring, we will bring what I like to call the Eternal Hunt to Skyrim, and the Eternal Hunt is essentially this concept of of destroy all civilization, let the wilderness reign supreme over everything, and then once that's done, the like the like the lycanthropes under her scene would be able to hunt at will all the time forever until the end of time. And that's what's called the eternal hunt. I got the idea from uh uh I think a Warhammer. They introduced that with the Beastmen. They refer to this event called the Eternal Hunt. And that's why they want to destroy all civilization. That's why they hate mankind. And they hate uh, cultures that bring what they call order to the landscape. They disrupt the, the this idea of being able to hunt at will all the time, which is the Eternal Hunt. So that's why her scene won. Because I thought, yes, I can follow her scene. I can make him love me. I can make him turn me into a werewolf and we can conquer Solstheim and, and Skyrim and we will use that as a foothold to essentially bring about the eternal hunt. And the way that would happen is by conquering all of Tamriel using the Daedric forces of uh, Hercene by... Uh, well, I mean, I'll show you as the game goes on. We'll get a little menu here where we can open up our little kind of uh, diplomacy with her scene, and one of the options is we can call for a Daedric invasion, which is a kind of kind of like the Oblivion Crisis. Only this time, it's going to be her scene instead of Mehrun's Dagon, who's trying to take over all of Tamriel. So that would that is the premise. That is the goal of this playthrough. And we can see here I picked a character who is a skull because I mean. It just made more sense than trying to justify why would he be a Nord or why would he be a Khajiit here in Solstheim, you know, that sort of stuff. This 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 is just Chief Rortek of Mosring of the House Malar. And the reason I picked the House Malar is Malar is the lesser deity of the hunt in the D and D universe, the Forgotten Realms. So he's just another hunting deity who was also the Lord of Man Beasts. And I, I, I felt that yeah, you know, that'd be a fit, that'd be a fitting name for the house that's going to push for the eternal hunt. And I picked the sigil of the red hand and the red claw, like the the bloodied hand and the bloodied claw, and kind of the transformation between the two. I thought, yes, that would make the most sense. But uh, this this preface has lasted quite long enough. I think. I think it is time now to play as Chief Rortek. Of most ring. I've also never played as a tribal group, so I'm not sure how different they are from feudal stuff. Tribes are subtle but agrarian. Tribal rulers are most often seen using the elective gavelkind, gavelkind succession law. All right. Well, what what is that? Oh, I see. Absolute cognatic rule by might. Your most powerful child will inherit though other powerful children are likely to interfere. The inheritor may also face challenges to their rule from powerful vassals should they show any signs of weakness. Women inherit on the same grounds men do. That is great. Oh, it's a Daedra chiefdom. That is very fucking cool. Very, very cool. Okay, so Chief Rortek, he's got his, uh, he's got his work cut out for him. He's got to create a very powerful heir that's going to succeed him. He needs to find a powerful wife that will provide him powerful children. And he needs to raise his forces to take over the rest of Solstheim. And already, already I can see that we're kind of, we're, we're kind of uh, on the weaker side. These other territories, Hirschstang and Felsad, are more powerful than ours. Hmm, concerning, concerning. Should I, re should I rename Mosring? Just rename it right off the bat? Hmm. Maybe. You know what? Why not? Why not? We will re rename it the region of Malar. Cool. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and move, move the time forward. A slowly, but have the time going. And I think for this playthrough, I'm going to do exclusively the hunting. The hunting focus. 
travels the realm, making friends and killing off Hercene's creatures. Oh yeah. That surely will honor the god of the hunt. Groom an heir. Become a king. Let's groom an heir. And let's get Chief Rortek married as soon as possible. Savannah is a very ugly Nord. Then we've got Arene, who is a Breton. In the cult of Sheogorath. Okay. All right, let's see if we can't do better than that. Arrange marriage between Rortek and... Nope. We will search all the realm for women that are available. Let's see, diplomatic range. Yes, any religion. How about my religion group? Okay, here we are. Oh, shit. Marth Mar Marta, spymaster of Castlejoy, is a known vampire. That's why she's 300 years old. Very nice, very nice. Let's go down here. What is this? Orsimer. Shard Zozag. Follower of Malakath. Code of Malakath. Reckless. Oh, and, and is an Orsimer. Interesting. She hates me, though, so I, I don't think that'd be wise to do. Then there's Lane, who is a very, very, very young Dunmer. Who follows Hermaeus Mora. Is there another follower of Hercene? Because I don't really want to have contending cults here. How about just my religion? No, there there is no one else that follows Hercene. That is unfortunate. Uh, Churl Arene follows... Yep, Sheogorath. Mirabel follows Sanguine. Okay... Hedonist, that makes sense. Lily of Ravenspring follows Hermaeus Mora. And that is why she is a journeyman mage. She's not bad looking either, but she is a Breton. Hmm. How about any religion? Yeah, preferably not spy masters of uh, the Soul Cairn. You know, just preferably not that. Um. <laughs> He could marry. I don't think he'll be able to marry a Khajiit. I don't think that'd be possible. It'd be funny to. It'd be funny to try. Yeah. See, not gonna happen. That would have been funny though. He might not actually even be able to get married now that I think about it, because because of the whole religious differences and stuff. Argonian learning hidden from the world at large, indeed. Hmm. Uh, she will. Shard Zozag will marry, and she's an orc. I'm not sure how that fits. Um, hmm. I'm not really sure what who to who to pick. Eight divines. Would she be interested? Uh, no. Shit. It seems like I'm stuck. With my religion group. Who does Lane follow? Hermaeus Mora. For a Dunmer, she doesn't really hate me. So that's that's pretty interesting. No is our spy master. Fuck. I don't see us being able to... Now, the reason why I kind of wanted to marry Lane was because... Being able to make children who are half-elves, or even potentially full-elves, could be useful. Borg Dorga. Yeah, they're kind of... They're kind of creepy looking. Hmm. Breton. A man from... They're powerful magicians due to their elven ancestry. Yeah, yeah, they are. There's a surprising amount of Bretons that Chief Rortek could marry. Then there's also this Nord who follows the Allmaker. Shit. Let's see. She's a Shrine of Argent. Shiogorath. Does that mean she's going to go insane one day? It could. It could very well mean that. But you know what? I don't think Hercene particularly cares about our bloodline. I don't think that's an issue. I don't think he cares as long as... 
Well, you know what? If that's the case, I'm just going to get a priest who's going to proselytize the Hercene religion, because I think that would be the most important thing to do right now, is build up our forces, prepare to defend ourselves in case we get attacked by the other Skull nations, which they very well might, and spread the religion of Hercene for, for the time being until we can muster enough troops to break free. So right now... Uh, not, maybe not necessarily break free, but... Uh, so this doesn't really matter. Religion group doesn't really matter, although this does mean... Hmm. Has a secret religion. Oh, okay. That's an odd option. Um, Join court. Let's... let's tr oh, okay. That's, that's not going to work. I mean, she does follow Hermaeus Mora, and she, but she is a Breton. I don't know if we want Breton... Breton's mixing with any culture, any religion, any religion, uh, join court, any, hmm, uh, oh, wow, the Nibinaeans look so bizarre, they look really bizarre, um, maybe I can type in elf, nope, how about just E-L, how about, it's not gonna be elf, it's gonna be myrrh, Okay. Can I marry or oh, not accept invitation to court? I am seeing only Dunmer. I am seeing an Ashlanders. Is it is it because of uh oh diplomatic range, that's why. We can't Yeah, we can't marry a uh oh snap. Green packed Elvin, she's 70 years old. Is she old? Adult. Follower of Hermamora. Green Pact Opinion. Known vampire. Uh, that might stand in opposition to our plans. And there's Seishi. Nah. Okay, how about... She probably, I probably can't marry her. She's tall. I like that. Tall. Follower of Almalexia. Hmm. Follower of Satha Sil. Follower of Boetia. It's still Lane, but she's a courtier. Yeah, but she's a follower of Almalexia. Let's see. Will she marry Rortek? No. God damn it. Damn it all. Damn it all. It's not going to work. Damn, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, you know what? Rortek doesn't really have time to worry about this shit. He doesn't really have time. So we're just going to pick Arene, who's the Churl of Argent. Yes. And we don't lose anything for it. And she is a... She's the same age as Rortek, and she she follows Shear Gorath, but I have no doubts that we're going to be able to uh, convince her otherwise. Oops, I am scrolling out for no reason. Oh, look at these cool little names. Bone Thane, War Thane, Law Thane, Lore Keeper. Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. Now then, we need to see if we can't find people... Oh, great. No one will join my court. Well, if these three will, so you know what? We'll take them. Invite, invite, and invite. Yeah, the people the people who are going to be following me are going to kind of hate me. I don't have any Thanes, though. Yes, Churl Arene and Chief Rortek have gotten married. We can collect royal aid duty. Royal aid duty? All right, I'll take it. All right, now these are the people in my court. Let's see, he dislikes me for short range and an infidel. And an infidel. They're of the Allmaker, right? They don't like being ruled by, by, by a chieftain who is not of the Allmaker, but is instead of the Hercene religion. So we're going to have to work around that. To the great chief somebody, yes. I want a lore keeper. But I don't think we have anybody who follows my religion, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, likely council positions. Mm, right. My council. I want to look at my council laws first. 
You have no you have no council laws available. You need to increase tribal organization in order to unlock them. Slavery slavery is outlawed is allowed. Hmm. You know what? This might actually be necessary. Yep, we're gonna slavery is legal within the realm. People may be bought and sold by happenstance of birth, indebtedness, or as to boils of war. Nidic, Kaji, and Tangmo Pantheon religions are unable to legalize this. Right, well I'm just gonna pass that because I can. And I think it's gonna be necessary because in order to make her seem really, really like us, we're gonna have to make a lot of sacrifices to him. Which I think is an is an honor. It's an honorable thing to do to the god of the hunt and we will sacrifice them by having great hunts in her scene's honor but now i'm kind of concerned yeah i'm kind of concerned why can't i name my wife where is she leading troops in chatul she's not even here in solstheim great because uh that's gonna be useful shit she leads 200 men defending against Baron Belth or Raven Spang in, in conquest of Castlejoy. Yeah, great. Um, can't form an alliance, not even with my own wife. Great. Things are already panning out well. Well for our lowly chieftain. Right, we're just going to have to bite the bullet on this one. And, God damn, we're going to have so many malcontents. Uh, Lasai. Improve, fabricate claims. Do I need to fabricate claims? Oh, shit. I am seeing new Cass's bellies that I am not familiar with. Conquest, rulers can conquer. All right, that's familiar. Inquisition against Solstheim. Inquisitions can be used against a heresy of an individual's religion to restore the true faith. When we declare war, we lose favor, which is not good. If we win, we gain 100 favor, 50 prestige, moral authority. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Establish tributary state. Chief Hejoris of, Hejordis of Felsad is weak, but if... But if they would just pay your tribute in the form of golden soldiers, you could protect them. Through war, you can force any realm that you or one of your tributary states border to pay you 20% of their income and 15% of their levies. 50? I meant 15. Will only break free if the suzerain has negative prestige, is not independent, has less realm. Right, right, right. Uh, when we declare war, uh, we'll have the opportunity to offer a peaceful resolution by agreeing to become a tributary. If we win the war, they essentially become a tribute state. Dual conquest of Felsad. Uh, Chief Hejordis of Felsad holds land in a duchy you are pretender to. By spending piety and gold, you can go to war over any county that is part of a duchy you hold land in, as long as the duchy has no holder. This Cass's belly is only available to characters of Count or Duke Tyr. I see. Uh, it seems that the conquest would be the best option. So we do, okay. So the point I'm doing all this is to to realize I don't need to fabricate claims. Uh, I can lower. Uh, but they don't have any vassals though. Hmm. That is that is concerning. Ah, okay. So here we have the diplomacy. Excuse me. We have the diplomacy menu for our deity. Um, does he have a position on the map? No. Doesn't seem like he does. Emperor Demis of the Cult of Hercene. Okay. The Cult of Hercene is located off map. Great. Um, and I'm guessing he's located off map as well. He's a Dramora. Yes. Interesting. I have no idea what the purpose of that is. Is Emperor... Well, this... Her scene likes dragonborn heroes. The mortals they most prefer to interact with are the doom-driven heroes of exceptional potential. Okay. And they hate craven cowards. So is Chief... Okay, well, we're going to have to do everything we can to make sure he doesn't become a coward because her scene would look, would look down upon that. I can pay tribute. I can make an offering. I don't think that'd be wise at the moment. But as you can see here, we can ask for all sorts of crazy shit. We can ask for the Savior's Hide. We can ask for the Ring of Hercene, even though it would be useless for us since we're not a Lycanthrope yet. And we will we will become eventually, but we need to... Ah, see, we need a thousand Ardor with our deity. Before we can do that, we can also claim a unicorn. I don't know if we're going to be claiming unicorns. 
monthly gain is 2.5 because we openly worship her scene. So that's a, it's a start. It's a start. Um... I don't, I don't know what to do with my Lothane. I don't know what to do with him. So we're going to make Rolf commander. He's going to train more troops. The Bone Thane is going to be our steward. Let's see. Collect taxes. Research economy tech. Theoretical failure. Oversee construction. I see. Uh, yeah, just, just collect taxes. Just collect taxes. We'll do Shadow Thane. My Shadow Thane has to be... Wait, wait a minute. I'm doing North Korea mode. Right. So I don't even need these guys. Not really. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think if I'm going to do this right... This could be a very short series, guys. This could be really, really short if I fuck this up too much. But he is North Korea mode. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to resign these people. I'm going to resign them all. And I'm actually going to close this. I'm going to disable this. Special minor titles. Uh, probably won't be necessary. I'll probably give those to my children. But for right now... Hmm. Yeah, my, my wife. Yeah, sure. All right, we're just going to start imprisoning people. And they're not going to like it. Maybe I should have someone be a war thane. And enforce martial law. Arrest chance goes up. So as long as we avoid arresting Tharner. Tharn, Tharner, right? That's his name? Yes. So don't arrest the dude with the helmet. But instead arrest everyone else. Alright, we got to pass time a little bit. Alright, has that improved my chances? Not yet. Come on now. There we go. Kidnap. Great. He's in my jail. We're going to kidnap this guy. He's in my jail. Awesome. N-ring. Yeah, he's... Oh, wow. Okay. So... So when you're doing this and you're uh, imprisoning most of your court... Join the Science and Arts Guild. Nope. All right. He fled. So the... I'm just looking at these different things. Join Mercantile Guild. Join the Greybeards. Nope. So when you do this and you imprison everybody in your court, you go full dictator. Oops. You can actually... You don't really have to worry about running out of courtiers because they periodically come back. All right, she fled. Now then, we'll go to Tharnger, and we'll throw him in jail. Oh, but he fled. That is fine. We'll turn this on now. Great. I should be super... Tyrannical, but for some reason I'm not. Opinion, tyrant, imprisoned, yeah. Hmm. Normally there's a little tyrant trait that pops up here, but I don't see that. Okay, anyways. So, what we can do now, so we go back here. Ooh, he really likes me now. Oh no, it's just been a month. Pay tribute, sacrifice a prisoner. Let's see, who can we sacrifice? Offer up a prisoner to blank with a root ritual killing. They will be pleased by your willingness and ability to extinguish another man mortal's life. Some Daedric princes do not accept human sacrifices. That makes sense. I will not sacrifice Svenna because I have other horrible plans for her, but we will sacrifice Eric. Do I get to select how they're sacrifice? Oh, okay, that was, <laughs> that was quick. At age 34... Okay. At age 34, your courtier Eric was offered up and sacrificed by Chief Rortek of Malar. So already, if you're a Skull on the island of Solstein, you can already tell that the the region formerly known as Mosring has all, like bad shits already happening over there because uh, uh, rumor is spreading across Solstein that the mad Chief Rortek of Malar is actually imprisoning his own people and sacrificing sacrificing them to his Daedric deity, which is something that the that the Skull don't do because they follow the Allmaker. And th this would be seen as, uh, well, quite the travesty. See, zealous, and he's an infidel, and the chief, t chief, the chief of Hirschtang just doesn't like us because we're not an Allmaker. All right. Well, you know what? Let's continue. Let's continue paying tribute to our deity with Bjornal and Bjornal for... 
Yeah, buddy, you deserve to be sacrificed. Okay. Just mass sacrifices. Accept me. Love me, Hercene. Love me. So, unfortunately, we don't get to really, uh, we don't really get to raise tribal army, found Merchant Republic, adopt feudalism. I can summon an army of true and steadfast warriors. They will surely come, as my prestige and influence in these lands are great, but once peace ensues, they will return to their homes. They fight mainly for honor, but I'll need to pay for food and provisions. Ah, and then we got visit the marketplace. You can borrow money, make an offering. Uh, go on a grand hunt. Yes. So one thing we can do is when we begin to execute some of our prisoners, we can actually execute them in the form of having, a, like, a, we, we can hunt them for sport. I think you need to have the hunter's trait and maybe lunatic or something, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, let's see. Banish in prison, join the... Oh, yes. Well, my goal was to use the option visit chambers, but I think that's something that is saved specifically for Game of Thrones. So that's not really an option here. So you know what we're kind of left with doing is we're just going to have to sacrifice uh, Savannah as well. Well, yeah, that is what it is. Ask for a boon. Let's see. Possesses long or eternal life. 2,000. 2,500. Bound Dremor Kin Marcher. So a Kin Marcher is like a Dremora General. Daedric Protection. Wealth of Oblivion. Let's see. Some of these are really hard to read. Publicly follows Cult of Hercene. Has the trait Follower of Hercene. One of these must true. Has greater or equal to 750 Ardor. Wow, that's a lot. Actually, that's not that much. And what would we get? Re receive a gift of, of, of rare treasure. This could include a hoard of gold and jewels, or even a weapon or piece of armor. There's a lot of new stuff here that I have no clue what it does. But to get our Daedric Invasion, we would need 25,000 Ardor. That is a lot of sacrifices. Oops. See, if I can get to 1,000 Ardor, I can request Lycanthropy, which would fit in perfectly with my character... Because Chief Rortek is a tyrannical dictator whom everyone already hates. So it just makes sense that he would also become a lycan. Or lycanthrope. Hmm. Alright, well I assume more people are going to show up over time. <laughs> my wife, my, my wife should hate me. Maybe I should kidnap her. Um, arrange a marriage? Why would I... Can I arrange a divorce? Settle a divorce for one gold. Yeah, I kind of would like... I kind of would like a wife who will actually join me. You know? In my realm. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go looking again. I, I mean, we might have to settle. We might have to settle with Rogmesh. But she will join my court. Very interesting. All right, so we'll have we'll we'll have her join us. Breton probably won't marry me. No. Doesn't like the infidels. I see. Somebody marry Chief Rortek. Shit. My religion group. Surely, surely somebody will want to... They will not join... Well, they join. They can't. Arrange marriage. They can. Hmm. Could marry... an Orsimer, because I, I don't really have anything against Orsimers. God damn it, it's going to be... It's impossible. And I'm not going to give him gold. I should just kidnap her. Can't do it. Shit. Steward of Plain Meddlers. What, what the fuck is that? I don't know what that means. No, there's not many options. Will she marry me? A 16-year-old Dunmer. Yes? Do it. Do it. 
And then we can probably just sacrifice Rogmesh. <laughs> oh, my character is a Nord? I guess. I guess, I guess, I guess. And this is my 16-year-old wife who is not really considered a Dunmer quite yet. That is, that is fine. Learning hidden from the world at large. I don't know what that means. Rogmesh. Dungeon. Damn it. <laughs> we got to keep trying. We got to keep trying. Military is maxed out at 400. Maybe I could have... She's got no martial skill, though. But she is decent with the monies. So I will have my wife be my steward and collect more money. Which is okay, because I don't actually intend to kill her. She is important. She is important. Alright, we'll go back to any, any in prison, any married, hopefully within uh, diplomacy range, and we'll just go with join, uh, god damn it, join court. No one, no one will join my court. I have, I actually am, comp I completely understand that, actually. Shit. You see, this is why we need to conquer stuff, because we get, we get access to more people. Ooh, that's kind of a scary sigil. Skull and crossbones. Hmm. What are we going to do? We just don't have the militaries to do anything. Go on a grand hunt. How much is that going to cost me? As a personal wealth of 25, we barely make any money as it is. Hmm. Okay. Is there a spot in the world where we can uh, kidnap some people? <laughs> kidnap some people, you know? Your wife, Chistus, Chief, Chistus? Chiefess Hlodala has sent you a gift. It is a small puppy, but of the finest pedigree and destined to grow into a great hunting dog. I will accept this gift. Send it back. Pay someone to quietly dispose of it. Nope. I will add it. And I will name it Hunter. Great. I received a beautiful new stray mutt. A stray mutt of unknown provenance. Fucking cool. Alright. Let's see if we can't kidnap some people. Is there anyone we can kidnap? Any chance to, at least? I mean, we'll, we'll take your undesirables. We will. We will take your undesirables. Let's see, do you hate me because I'm tyrannical? No, you don't. Oh, sweet. So they did They did kind of, I'm, I don't know if you'd call it a fix, but they did kind of uh, uh, change the ty tyranny system. Uh, they did change the tyranny system in that you can be tyrannical in your own territory. Well, well, back in the day, if you're tyrannical in your own territory, you would get traits that would say you're tyrannical and all of the world would hate you for it. Just all the world. Even even places that have no idea who you are would automatically hate you for it. Now it seems just your vassals and courtiers will hate you. Oh, excuse me. Yes, let, let, let us look to Skyrim. Maybe we can find potential people to kidnap here. It doesn't seem likely. It doesn't seem likely. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. And we haven't gotten any new slew of cultures, so maybe you can actually kill off all your cultures. Uh, interracial marriage. This character is involved in an interracial marriage with an at least partially compatible race. For the, for example, a human and a merm. This marriage will rarely result in viable offspring. Dynastic opinion minus 5. Fertility minus, minus 15. Now see, that is the exact opposite of what I wanted to happen. Uh, Dragonborn discovered by her scene King Taisho of Jamira is the Dragonborn. Oh, really? This character is... Yeah, this dude's pretty much a god now. <laughs> god damn it. Give me people that we can kidnap. Maybe I should have gone more in intrigue with this character. I didn't think I would need to, though. I, I really had no idea... Going into, going into this, what kind of character I was going to need. Or even wanted. Hmm.
damn, this is a this is this is quite the conundrum because there is no one who will join my realm now. If you guys have suggestions for how I can... Oh, sweet, my dog is growing. Pure. I see. If you guys have any suggestions for getting people to my territory... So that I can sacrifice them or sell them into slavery, then that would be much appreciated hmm this is one of the downsides I will say of playing a smaller a smaller ruler in CK2 is, is your your options are a lot more limited you can't do as much stuff as if you're a, a great ruler or a king that's why I picked the kingdom of Skingrad for the golden lion campaign for elder kings because a king can do a lot more than someone who rules just a little territory I'm oh, just taking a sip of my drink. After giving my advice on a delicate matter, the courtier asked me to accept a small gift of gold as thanks for my help. I accept the gift reluctantly, which would increase my diplomacy, would lower my stewardship, would make people like me. Wasn't my, adver my advice worth a few more coins? Um, while I love money, I do think trying to improve... I have lots of things, and giving my surplus to others is a good deed. I've gained the charitable trait that will hopefully make people like us a little bit more. Oops, what is this? Hercene's power waxing. Mages and scholars across the known world are in agreement. Hercene revels in nearly unprecedented power and has the ability to have a profound effect on the mortal plane if he so pleases. Cultists and worshippers are scrambling to find ways to get in Hercene's good graces. Is, um... Is that code for something? Should I be doing something? I don't know. Offer in... Oh! I can offer my stray mutt. Ooh. That kind of... Um, I don't know. That doesn't really... <laughs> that, that doesn't really sit well with me. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I'm not a big... I'm not a big uh, uh, dog person, but for some reason... Offering up my stray mutt doesn't seem like a very good idea. And it seems Chiefess uh, Holodala is raising taxes a bit too much. A bit too much, much. Um, uh, make an offering. Let's slow this down a little bit. Make an offering. I lose 30 gold. Gets made offering to her scene. I get 25 favor. What the fuck is favor for? I have no idea. I want him to love me. Love me. But he doesn't love me enough for him to do... I think the best thing to do would probably be to try to go for a thousand and get Lycanthropy first. Maybe. What does that mean? Triumphant. The realm of Oblivion is abuzz with the activities of its lesser danger, and the ruling prince is confident in their ability to project power upon Nern. A great deal of the prince's energies are being focused into their army and boons they grant to mortals whose collective zeal is at an apex. So apparently Hercene's doing really, really well. Maybe because we've offered him a slew of sacrifices. I don't really know. I don't really know. You know, if he could, if he could send me some... Actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. A lesser Daedric horde. If the liminal, liminal barriers are weak and Hercene's powers are waxing, he can provide a small army of lesser Daedra to aid you in battle. Holy crap. How much of this do I need? One of these must be true. Publicly follows the cult of Hercene. Has greater or equal to 2,500 Ardor. We could summon, or, or we could ask Hercene to send us a lesser Daedric horde, a small army of lesser Daedra, to assist us in conquering Soul's time and returning it to his control. All we need to do is get 2,500 Ardor. Well, shit. My hunting dog needs proper training if he's to perform well. Per, per, he is to perform well during hunts. Perhaps you should take a hand in this yourself. Uh, you will spend time outside training your dog. Ah, I'm not doing anything else. I might as well. 
Well, if we simply wait, Hercene will love us over time because we worship him. Who does my wife worship? Her, her memora? That's all right. And she's kind and arbitrary. That is okay. Okay, that's my, that's my stray mutt. What is this? Destroy stray mutt. No, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's terrible. I'm not going to do that. Join court. Won't join court because he's in a lesser union. Excuse me. Yep, the, 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 the list goes blank. So I'm going to need some creative ways to get people to come to my realm if we're going to... Shit. I can't even kidnap people well. Chief Rortek, your, uh, your abilities suck, mate. What is this? What is this? Companion's Bloodline. Oh, okay. Hmm. Maybe if... Well... Kidnap character. I mean, it looks like the highest percent chance I can get is uh, 50. Which is... Not good. Not good enough. Not gonna work. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I was really expecting my court to be repopulated over time, but I guess they changed that aspect of it as well. So, right now, it's just me and my... It's, it's, it's lowly Chief Rortek with his 400 men and his wife, the interracial... Chiefess Hlodala. Make an offering. Toggle trait visibility. Borrow money from the local vendors. Hmm. Open title decisions. Visit marketplace. Open employment list. I guess I can give uh, my wife some traits. Might as well, right? <laughs> Make her a commander? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and then succession laws has reigned for at least 10 years. Oh, okay. I think I can do that. I think I can manage manage that. Um, open employment list. Is this going to cost me money? Ah, oh, employ a counselor. Employ a sh uh, what is this? Compose a book. Employer retainer. Promote a random retainer. Present a debutante. A young noblewoman who has caught your eye makes her debut at a formal ball. Uh, okay. Steward, spymaster, marshal, mage, chancellor. I, I kind of want... I kind of want... I can't even I can't even buy them. It has a prestige of at least 100. Ah, I see. Consult your other decisions. I see. Well, I guess I can pay one gold to have uh, Herolfder Af Loverstone has arrived at your court ready for employment. I see. Oh, so I can pay people to come to my court and then I can sacrifice them. Oh, gotcha. I mean, my wife is already doing really, really well. I mean, what is his other abilities? Learning? And he follows the cult of her scene. Fantastic. I like it. Let's see. County religion converted. Subject religion. Heathens attack the lore keeper. Heretic noble. I'm going to have you proselytize in Malar because the majority of the people are heretical in their worship of the Allmaker, and they stand in direct opposition to the goals of Chief Rortek, House Malar, and her scene. In the past months, you've been spending a lot of time outside training your trusty hunting dog. You find that the combination of daily physical exercise and fresh air are doing wonders for your health and constitution. I get diligent. Awesome. Chief Rortek, for a guy who is tyrannical and terrible and hated... Well, he's actually not that hated... 
yeah, he's actually not that hated, um, which is kind of surprising. Well, it's because this guy has the, uh, the same religion and shit, so we need more people like this guy. Yeah, I might be North Korea mode with anyone who doesn't follow her scene. Anyone who's a heretic, pretty much. Can I employ anyone else? Employ a, a retainer, just a random retainer. Brinston Afkulasin has arrived at your court, and he is, uh, he's kind of the same. But he does have seven trained troops. Great. Damn, and it only costs me one gold. That's 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 uh that's pretty OP actually. Now see, he would have been better to put in Marshall, but. But you know it is what it is. Let's see, intrigue is at eight. Let's uh let's 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 put him here and we'll do scheme. And see if we can't get one more. Employ one more random retainer. Don't really care what his abilities are unless they're zero, which they're not. Uh see now he would have been better. But that is okay. And then I'm going to um I would love to improve diplomatic relations with my with the head of my religion, but he's not on the map, so I don't really see who else would really be worthwhile doing anything with this guy. Uh, maybe... Shit. I don't know. Maybe send him to Winterhold? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. But now I've got a court of six people who actually all do kind of like me. So that's great. Histori historiographer? Historiographer. Uh, sure. Court tutor. Yeah. House Carl's great. I even get people to protect me. Master of the Metery. Commander. He doesn't have the most glorious faction yet, but, uh... You know, he, he, he's getting there, he's getting there. Now, what, how does... Council, council laws. So does that mean I don't have to get permission from the council? Because that'd be awesome. Oh, what does this mean? A young noble woman who's caught your eye. I guess we'll see. And her name is Frisky. <laughs> Who is lustful? <laughs> well, well, okay, all right. I will. I will accept it. I. It's just that's that's too funny. That's funny. <laughs> all right. So probably there are not any crazy factions or anything, right? Known plots, auto stop plots. If you could go back here, adopt feudalism, and this other stuff, visit the marketplace. Sorely lacking in materials, but good in possession of material wealth. Purchase a mount, purchase a pet, visit a library. I can buy a pet. I see. That's cute. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna wrap this episode up here. It seems that Chief Rortek is. Facing an uphill battle here. He rules a region of Solstheim that itself doesn't adhere to his own religion. So he's got to get the people of Malar on the side of his Daedric Prince. He's got to convert... Well, he actually doesn't have to convert that many people in his court because apparently you can just recruit random retainers and just they just materialize out of the blue and they all follow your religion and stuff. So that's really convenient and they're super cheap, especially when you're broke as hell, which is another problem that Chief Rortek has. He doesn't have an economy. His economy is trash. What he does have is a decent martial ability and the rest of his abilities are pretty me mediocre. He doesn't have a lot of men. He doesn't have great commanders. But the one thing he does have is the is the is is growing our door with Persine, which will prove invaluable in the future, I promise you. We will use our 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 faith to our deity to crush the heretics of Felsad and Herstang. Who have a lot more troops than we do. A lot more. And they have much higher marshals. So at the moment, 
they are oh, this guy's got an insane intrigue so at the moment yeah the other chieftains are much stronger than we are and we're gonna have to be wary but i have full confidence that chief rortek will see this task to completion solstheim will be unified under the banner of the bloody hand and bloody claw of house malar and her scenes influence will return to the island but that will all have to take place in the next episode thank you guys for watching this has been crusader kings 2 elder kings the eternal hunt i've been jablivian and until next time see you guys later